Hello YouTube and welcome to No Fail Hydroponics. Today we're going to talk about the ebb and flow system. Just a short video today. We're going to tell you what it is, how it works, we're going to talk about the pros and cons, and then we're going to give you our final recommendation. So first of all, let's talk about what it is. It's a real simple system, um, not a whole lot of moving parts, not real complicated to build. It consists of a tray, a table that that tray sits on top of, a reservoir full of nutrient solution, submersible pump used to pump the nutrient solution into the tray, and then that's plugged into the wall. And this is how it works. When that pump is turned on, either plugged directly into the wall or on a mechanical timer, it's going to be energized and it's going to pump nutrient into the reservoir. And you can see my little curly waves here. That's to illustrate water or nutrient solution. And so many times a day, it's going to be energized, and you decide. It's going to depend on the size of your plants um, and how quickly they dry out. But if this is every time this is energized, it's going to pump nutrient into the tray for an odd amount of time, 5 minutes, 8 minutes, 15 minutes. It's going to flood up, and when that pump is de-energized, it's going to turn off, and then the nutrient is going to flow back to the reservoir via gravity. Real simple. That's why they call it a flood and drain or an ebb and flow system. Nutrient goes in when it's flooded, and it drains back down via gravity when it's not. Um, the containers, one container, 20 containers, 40 containers, it's really up to the gardener at that point. But they're usually some kind of mesh bottom. Um, expanded clay balls can be used, a mixture of cocoa and perlite. Many different things can be used to hold uh, the media to hold the plants in there. But the configuration and number of plants, that's up to the individual individual gardener. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's talk about some of the pros. Okay? Or the good things about it. Easy to design and set up. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of moving parts. No small emitters. No, no long lengths of, of drip lines that need to be done. No, no elaborate hardware. So this system can be set up fairly quickly. Whether it's a small closet bedroom, a garage, or even larger. They can be set up very quickly. And I'll put another video on up, another video up that can show you a cheat um, how to make a ebb and flow table for less than 10 bucks. But um, you can populate a good size room with one of these, four of these, eight of these fairly quickly. Number two on the pros, the reliability and the durability. These systems, the ebb and flow system, they're durable. They're kind of the workhorse of the industry, of the indoor gardening industry. Once set up properly, once the timer is configured, the reservoir um, is filled, they work. And they, they very seldom do they go down. Um, let's put it this way. In my 20 plus years, I may have seen one, maybe two pumps go bad. Um, and they're so cheap, it's always a good thing to have a, a spare on hand. But they're reliable. Their durability is, is not surpassed on any other hydroponic system. So you can be rest assured when you're out of town, at work, at your girlfriend's house, family function, that your system's going to keep working behind your back. You, know, you can get rid of that stress to make sure everything's working okay. Because if this system, system is so reliable, you don't even have to worry about it. Number three, good yields. When configure, configured properly and with regular maintenance, these systems produce just as well as anything else. Okay, let's talk about cons or drawbacks of the ebb and flow system. As oddly as it sounds, the reliability is also that we talk about as being a benefit is also a detriment to the um, ebb and flow system because it's so reliable and so durable, we find that it creates lazy gardeners. And what I mean by lazy gardeners, I mean a guy who never goes into his room as often or never goes in there. Um, not performing his routine maintenance um, because the system performs so reliably, you find yourself spending less and less time in there and just making sure there's just enough nutrient in there so the plants are surviving and that they're not flourishing. Um, that's one of the drawbacks of this system. Um, we see it time and time again and it's too bad because we get a lot of guys, they just want to blame the plants or blame the system and they're always tearing things up when... These things work great when, when, when uh, dialed in. Number two, 
Um, an ebb and flow system is going to need regular maintenance. Just all hydroponic systems are going to need re regular maintenance. But because of this flooding action, of the pump flooding and then de-energized, draining, and then flooding and draining so many times daily, what you get is you get an excess buildup of salts right about this flood line. And it will start to build up in the plant's media. So it's not a big deal, especially if you use a high-grade nutrient. Um, you can find you can flush less, but it's something that's got to be done. So what happens is, you know, you need to perform routine maintenance um, and flush the nutrient, the whole hydroponic system. Flush out the nutrients from there and any excess salts that may have uh, developed and maybe calcified um, along the system. Uh, around the drains, around the edges of the tray, along the tubing. Um, so routine maintenance. And because the tray fits under, I'm sorry, the reservoir fits underneath the tray, and sometimes these systems are shoved in the closets or in the small spaces. They'll sit, the, the system will sit right on top of the reservoir. Okay, and it makes it not the easiest thing to access. So um, when you need to perform routine maintenance, clean out the reservoir, uh, uh, do, do, a, do a system flush, you need to get to the reservoir. And what you'll find is guys get lazy. Oh, I don't want to do it today or I'll do it next week, next week, next week. And before you know it, they're coming to us saying, hey, my plants are burned up after two months. So um, I'm just dumping chemicals in there. So it's something that has to be done. So when you plan out your system, make sure you make it ex the, the reservoir and everything accessible. And make sure that, number, number one, you know, no lazy gardeners. So finally, my recommendations. Should you look at getting an ebb and flow system? Um, ebb and flow tray flood system for a hydroponic system. Do I give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? I say thumbs up. They're reliable. Okay. And if you're a good uh, gardener who actually goes in there and gardens, takes care of the routine maintenance, um, uh, you anticipate any kind of uh, uh, issues popping up, these gardens are reliable, durable, and they're going to give you yields, good yields, of good quality harvest. So um, I give the uh, ebb and flow system two thumbs up and it's something we recommend for the beginner and the expert. So uh, thank you for watching this episode of No Fail Hydroponics. Be sure you like our, um, give us a like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. As always, thank you for stopping by and spending time with us. Be sure to like our videos and subscribe. Until next time, have a nice day.